Gears of War from Epic Games was released in 2006. With chainsaw guns and gore aplenty, gamers wanted their fix. So take a seat around the fire and find a drink to pour, as the story today is here retold. Let loose the Gears of War! Act 1. Ashes. On the planet of Serra, beauty and peace, there was not a soul around that was able to expect, let alone to prepare, for the horrors underground. In the cities and lands all over the planet, the ground below gave way to a horrific race of murderous beasts, the Locust, on Emergence Day. The humans fought back as best they could, but victories were few. With no choices left for how to survive, they decided what to do. A network of weapons of mass destruction, satellites called the Hammer of Dawn, were used to destroy all civilization, a small Pyrrhic victory won. Fourteen years later in Jacinto Prison, in the dark Marcus Phoenix waits. For four years he has rotted here, a victim to his fate. As locust wretches clamber above, their drool is dripping down. Footsteps are heard out in the hall, an old friend to be found. Dominic Santiago tells his robot companion Jack to rip open the thick cell door and then throws down a heavy sack. Marcus is needed on the front lines, the locust threat has grown bolder. As Dom tells Marcus in sarcastic tone, Welcome back to the army, soldier. A choice of direction through the prison. Which way do you want to pass? Let's take the prison blocks. I'm ready to kick some ass. Marcus and Dom, brothers in arms, fight through the prison's halls. As a corpse or spider just misses their chopper, the first of many close calls. Marcus is welcomed to Delta Squad as they fly to Embry Square. Colonel Hoffman, the man in charge, is waiting for them there. As gunfire erupts from all around, Hoffman briefs his squad. They have something called a light mass bomb, a veritable act of God. They can kill all the locusts underground, but they first need targeting data. It is Delta Squad's goal to map locust tunnels with a tool called the Resonator. Alpha Squad must first be found. Kim asks, will air support come? Hoffman scoffs at his pointless request. You are the support, son! Delta fights on and stumbles across some cog soldiers dead and cold. A device is with them, but the resonator is not, so they garbage it down a hole. Further forward, they press through the hordes, the House of Sovereigns ahead. When Carmine's gun gets jammed in his shot, the first of many Carmine's dead. They hold their position against their foe, an ass-kicking deftly handed. When down below we meet Augustus Cole, in victory grand standard. He's surrounded by Locust, fighting alone, a testament to his name. As Delta joins with him, they continue ahead. Oh yeah, I'm back in the game! Some Locust ahead are jamming the radios, Delta can't reach control. With Hammer of Dawn targeters in hand, they advance towards their goal. They engage the locust and scorch them all in a beam of heavenly flame. As the last cedar dies, the radio crackles. They can hear control again. They connect with Alpha, but they are pinned down by turrets on the roof. Delta climbs up and kicks their asses with a sturdy lancing tooth. Marcus uses a turret above to rain hell on the foe below. Alpha is saved, the resonator in hand. They're all set to go. Marcus feels uneasy as the evac chopper arrives. The locusts spring an ambush and they all fight for their lives. Lieutenant Kim gets split from the group with no time to be calm as he skewered and dies upon the blade of the evil General Rom. They quickly run inside a tomb. Damon Baird starts making a fuss when a berserker scream is heard nearby. He hastens them all to hush. One of their team ignores this plea, and his volume and pace quickens. We see him get viciously torn apart. He probably should have listened. 
Berserkers are blind, they hunt by sound, and are terrifyingly strong. Delta Squad must use this fact to lead the beast along. They bust their way out of the tomb in range of the Hammer of Dawn, and set the Berserker's corpse alight, smoldering on the lawn. Hoffman informs the Delta Squad on updates to their mission. An emulsion fuel factory nearby should be their next position. They'll have to make the journey on foot, they cannot fly at all. With worsening dangers up ahead as the night begins to fall. Act 2. Nightfall. Dom says he has a plan in mind for speeding up their pace. But on the way there, some boomers arrive to shoot them in the face. Marcus and Baird take them down, and bicker as they pass through a gate. Dom just laughs and points out with a smile. Like two assholes on their first date. <laughs> out in the world, the civilians of Sarah became what are called the Stranded. Left alone to survive how they can with the cards that they've been handed. Dom reveals that he has a friend in a nearby stranded bunker. With a vehicle the Delta Squad can use, it's aptly named the Junker. As they fight their way to the stranded position, a corpser shows its head. But instead of killing its prey all at once, it follows and teases instead. They reach the gate of the stranded settlement, but they are not welcome friends. The stranded have no love left for the cog who left them at these loose ends. Dom finds his friend Franklin and asks for the junker, but instead a deal is struck. Cole and Baird must stay behind and help while they go and pick up the truck. Dom, it is teased, is looking for someone, a woman that he hopes was seen. By the stranded in the settlements he has passed through, but so far she has not been. Marcus and Dom make their way to the junker where it sits at Chap's gas station. But in the dark of night, new threats are about, between them and their destination. As the pair board a barge to cross the river, the sun falls out of sight. And swarms of locust krill emerge and take wing, for they are afraid of the light. If krill are about and you're caught in the dark, the swarm it will descend. And with razor-sharp claws, the torrent of death will bring you to a swift end. Moving quickly from lamp to lamp to keep themselves out of the dark, Marcus and Dom reach the far shore and quickly disembark. Baird makes a call on the radio, treats the stranded like a jerk. He mocks them for asking for autographs from Cole. Hey, number 83, sign my shirt. For Cole used to be a famous athlete that played on the thrashball court. But since the Locust invaded the world, the League was forced to abort. Dom and Marcus move through the town, making sure to stay in the light. The Stranded left propane tanks out to shoot to help out with this plight. Marcus calls Cole on the radio, and he sounds like he feels like a winner. Yeah, yeah baby, we got to hook up. They giving us a big ass dinner. Bear disagrees and states his concern that he's gonna just get dysentery. But Marcus tells him to shut the hell up and just eat the food and be merry. The meal is short-lived as a little while on, reports come in of more locust, moving in on the stranded position, so Baird and Cole must get focused. Marcus and Dom, nearly at the junker, meet up with a drunken louse. This stranded asshole will toggle the lights as our heroes move through a house. He teases them once as they pass through and come out on the far side. And just down a hill at the end of the road is the gas station and their ride. The junker is there, but the fuel tank is empty. They must defend it as it gets filled. As wave after wave of the locust horde is swiftly and efficiently killed. With the junker fueled, they hop on board and head back to get Baird and Cole. But these dark roads are infested with krill, and the travelers must pay their toll. They use a large lamp on the back of the truck to keep all the krill at bay. But upon arriving at the settlement, an assault is now underway. Delta Squad gathers together again and helps quell the Locust advance. Thanks to their presence, at least this time, the Stranded are given a chance. With the Locust defeat and the Junker in hand, Delta leaves the Stranded behind. They drive on quietly into the night and on towards the Emulsion Mine. Act 3 Belly of the Beast 
They arrive at the mine in a thick downpour, a factory their destination. It was built to refine a resource called emulsion, a process of human creation. But emulsion, you see, is not safe to touch, and it's found deep under the ground. So a new type of corrupted locust was formed. Lambent wretches are around. The front door to the factory is locked, and Jack can't cut their way through. So Delta Squad splits up to find another way in, with nothing better to do. Marcus and Dom find a lift in the back and climb in through a second floor window. They arrange to meet up in the minecart control room to ride to the mines below. On their way through, they nearly get shot by a cowering, stranded man. They need to unlock a factory door. He helps them as well as he can. Bad radios, they found a path through the sewer, but he's not happy, it's clear, and jibes to them. There's room for one more. It's a fucking party down here. Marcus and Dom continue on and find a room with a floor made of boards. The stranded steps in a weakened spot and falls victim to the locust hordes. They progress through the room while stepping with care, moving careful and slow, and finally reach the cart room they seek, meeting Baird and Cole down below. Upon meeting the pair, Dom points out their smell and suggests they ride two by two. And you shitheads need to get in your own carts. No way am I standing next to you. They ride their carts down a maze of tracks with locusts shooting offside. But the smartest move when playing this part is to just stay in cover and hide. On some large drilling platforms, Delta Squad boards and rides them down below. They must plant the resonator near the pumping station, not that far to go. Baird points out, Stinks down here. There's krill shit everywhere. The krill will return when dawn arrives. Before then, they should get out of there. As they make their way through the mines and caves, a rock slide splits the squad. They'll meet up ahead at the pumping station, Marcus confirms with a nod. The caves are long and dark and deep. Lambent wretches and locusts abound. When suddenly, a massive corpser drops down from above to the ground. It stands between Marcus, Dom, and their goal. They shoot it to force its retreat. They destroy the supports of the platform it's on, and it burns in the emulsion heat. Meeting up with Baird and Cole, they arrive at the pumping station. It's infested with locusts, Theron guards. It's time for their evisceration. With the platform clear, they set down the resonator and evacuate as it fires. Up on the surface, they radio it in and lay down in the grass overtired. Hoffman calls in to break their reprieve. The resonator pulse was too weak, so the data it gave them was too insufficient compared to what they seek. But Baird on the grass plays with the device that was tossed in the hole in Act 1. He found it down below in the caves, with the chances of that being none. Apparently the device contains much more detail on the tunnels of the locust grubs. The mapping source is in Marcus' father's house. They must find the data hub. Yes, sir. Act 4. The Long Road Home The Raven helicopter delivers them down to a courtyard filled with foes. Delta proceeds to kill them all because that's just how this game goes. They make their way through the buildings and streets of this place called East Barricade. The Hammer of Dawn is available again, so with heat every enemy is flayed. They're split up yet again it seems, but can help when danger is near. Thanks for the assist, Marcus says. You know it. That's why we're here. They encounter some stranded looting for guns and a gravely wounded man. Marcus says, Dom and I will go ahead and clear the way. You catch up when you can. Marcus and Dom head on back out to pass through the conservatory. When, of course, another berserker appears, their next foe in the story. Just as before, they must lead it by sound to a spot with open air, and fire down hell rain from heaven above to scorch and burn and flare. They battle and blast and carve their way through the streets to Marcus Dad's home. A grand staircase awaits them. They must make their way up, but of course they're not alone. Star Wars has taught us that they shouldn't win, they don't hold the high ground. But Marcus and Dom are beasts among men, and soon at the top they are found. Baird and Cole catch up at this point, they found a dead vehicle out back. Marcus orders them to go round and fix it as him and Dom start the attack. 
They make their way inside the house and clear it out room by room. Rones and wretches are swiftly dispatched by weapons that go boom. They find a secret entrance down in the wine cellar of the great manor. Inside is a trove of computers and check. Jack approaches it with his scanner. The data here is far more complete. There's more tunnels than were expected. It provides them all the data they need to set where the bomb is directed. The data is huge and it's far too slow for all of it to be transmitted. So Jack stays behind to download the files until on his hard drive they're fitted. Baird and Cole are upstairs in the house. The locust assault is approaching. So Marcus and Dom return to their friends to prevent the horde from encroaching. The locusts push in, they swarm and they swarm. The battle is met and fought hard. With Marcus and Dom protecting the house and Baird and Cole in the yard. They protect the vehicle they've just repaired and allow Jack to get every file. They board the truck and drive away and avoid a broom arc with style. Act 5. Desperation. The squad soon arrives at a large train station. The light mass bomb is on board. They need to input the target data they found, but out pours the locust horde. Clearing the station, Delta Squad runs to hop on the departing train. But Baird and Cole were running too slow, and the squad is split up again. The light mass bomb is at the front of the train, and Marcus and Dom at the back. They must push to the front through the locust aboard. Onwards, they attack. A door is reached that Jack must rip, and a noise screams out from behind. Somehow they passed by a berserker before. These boys are definitely blind. They request to use the Hammer of Dawn, but Anya radios no one tells why. Negative, Delta, you can't. Not with all those nemesis in the sky. The Hammer of Dawn not an option. They must take this berserker out. They decouple and derail the train cars it was on. It's definitely dead, no doubt. They enter the train cars further ahead and reapers fly up alongside. Marcus and Dom do their best to take out the locust hitching a ride. On the roof of the train car they find two large turrets and aim them square at the reapers. They won't let the locust get their hands on the bomb. Finders keepers and losers weepers. Anya on the radio informs the two there are wretches four cars ahead. They're trying to decouple the train car on them and leave them both for dead. With 45 seconds up on the clock, Marcus and Dom power through and mercilessly blow all the wretches apart because what else were they gonna do? Marcus, you've gotta drop that data right now! As he turns and looks at Dom, they see who is there to dismantle the missiles, just the ominous General Rom. He's protected by Krill, they swarm all around, acting like a moving shield. Only with explosive guns can they leave the General revealed. As Marcus and Dom continue this dance of removing the krill and then shooting, General Rahm slowly walks in approach with vile determination he's moving. As hope seems the furthest, with one final shot, the General finally falls. When trying to kill this asshole on insane, it definitely takes some big balls. Colbert and Hoffman fly up alongside as Dom jumps off off the train, while Mox heads over to the bomb to upload the tracking aim. The train hurls ahead, a break in the tracks. It'll fall to the emulsion below. Marcus is done, the bomb is all set. He jumps up to the chopper to go. The train follows course and falls to the ground. The light mass bomb then fires. The missiles seek their way through the caves and explode in a funeral pyre. It reaches the depths of the locust tunnels and burns them all out at once. As fire spreads across the locust stronghold, burning wretches in corpses and grunts. The cog fly off, their mission complete, and Hoffman praises the four. But a menacing voice says of humanity. They do not know why we wage this war. Why we cannot stop. Will not stop. Why we will fight and fight and fight. But that's it for now. A small victory won as our heroes fly into the night. Thanks again so much for watching this, guys. I super appreciate those of you that made it to the end of the video. 
If you'd like to see more of these or if you have any feedback on this one, please just leave a comment below and show your support with a like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. If you have any ideas for other game series you'd like me to do, I would definitely love to hear from you. But until then, until the next video, be legendary.